fellow Dominicans resident at home and abroad, visitors to a beautiful island, friends, ladies and gentlemen. I take this opportunity once again to express my sincere thanks and profound gratitude to the voters of Dominica for the resounding mandate they have given to the Dominican Law Party and myself to govern the affairs of state for the next five years. Moreover, I am pleased that the preliminary reports of the several international observer teams and missions who observed our elections have given a resounding nod of approval to the open and transparent manner in which these elections were conducted and the over overarching conclusion that the will of the people of Dominica was manifested and determined fairly. My dear people, General Elections 2022 was called to trigger a national reset. For me, these are not just empty words or a new catchphrase that sounds good when we say it. It is in fact quite to the contrary. Dominica has great potential and has created plans and policies that will build our resilience and spur greater economic growth and development for our country. However, in order to realize our true potential, we need all Dominicans, despite what our political differences may be, to be working towards the development of Dominica and a better life for our people. It is an opportunity, therefore, for us to pause as a nation and a people and reflect seriously on what will be required to navigate us successfully through the maze of uncertainty that now envelopes the region and the world as a result of circumstances not of our making but with which we are forced to grapple. The rising cost of living is a major issue for all of us. The price of food, raw materials and transportation has significantly increased regional and internationally from the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and the war in Ukraine, both issues that are beyond our control. The government has taken action to cushion the impact as much as it has been able to. The reality is there is only so much that can be done. But your government will continue to do all within its power and the resources available to ease the burden on our people. There are also vexing issues such as the inconveniences and the cost of inter-island air travel and maritime transportation. This carries with it major social and psychological challenges for those who need to traverse the islands from, for business, pleasure, or simply to visit and interact with loved ones or access vital health care and other services. Many have raised this issue, and the reality is that our islands in the Caribbean are in many ways literally and figuratively cut off from each other in a manner that makes it nigh impossible for the average citizens or residents to commute. In essence, my dear people, we end 2022 and approach 2023 knowing that we shall have to be creative and innovative in navigating and surmounting these and other hurdles occasioned by external shocks and influences. Confronting these challenges, we should not allow political tribalism and disunity stifle our ability to succeed as a nation. We should not seek to tear others down, but to stretch out a helping hand to others, pull each other up and celebrate their successes. And this is why I called for, and I'm forging ahead with the concept and ideal of a national reset. Those of us who are committed to and desirous of bringing about meaningful, meaningful change in this country, must begin 2023 on the right footing. We must prepare ourselves for the short and medium term challenges occasioned by climate change, global terror, and rising food prices. Additionally, implications for sustaining social services and provision of adequate healthcare for special interests and vulnerable groups would be enormous. All this is why, ladies and gentlemen, in structuring my proposed government, I have decided to include all our elected parliamentarians at levels ranging from parliamentary secretary, minister of state, and ministers of government. I want for all to share in and be part of the national decision-making process so that each constituency returned to the Dominican Labour Party can 
and will have a voice at the table, both at the policy formulation stage and in the parliament of this country. In this new and inclusive Dominica that we are trying to build, I've attempted to reach out to and meet with known opposition members. But that has been met with varying degrees of success. The embrace of social partners shall continue to remain a top priority of a government, so as to close the gaps and pursue the philosophical concept of creating a national construct where Dominicans of all political and ideological persuasions can sit and discuss the lone agenda issue of Dominica. So this evening, I wish to share with you the intended makeup of the new government. Most glaring shall be my decision not to retain the vital Ministry of Finance and Economic Development. I have made known my intention not to serve out this term as Prime Minister, and therefore I have, in structuring this cabinet of ministers, begun to share the traditional load and weight of responsibility of the Prime Minister with some of my more, of my more senior members. In this regard, also, you will see that I have retained ministerial responsibility for issues of governance, and chief among these at this time is the matter of electoral modernization. This undertaking, embarked upon several years ago by us, will be followed through and implemented in the spirit of cooperation <coughs> and national collaboration by mid-2023. Later, I shall make specific reference to the day-to-day -day management of that particular initiative. Structuring of this new cabinet has also taken into account the need to forge new linkages, such as between foreign affairs, international business, and trade. This shall all be part of a single portfolio, as we believe they are complementary <clears throat> and can be better advanced from a single ministerial perspective and direction. I firmly believe that we need in great earnest to attract new and exciting business ventures to Dominica. Likewise, I believe that we need to create not only the enabling environment to bring about new high-paying jobs for people, but also to boost production of local products for the local and export markets. In this regard, trade and agriculture will be working closely together to formulate and maintain this desired nexus. Health, wellness, and social services shall be a single portfolio, and we shall bring together at the policy-making level bright and energetic parliamentarians who shall work assiduously at maintaining and improving the stellar health services and systems and an improved delivery of health care for all our people. Culture, youth, sports, and community development are other intertwined areas that will be falling under one portfolio, which will also be highlighting the key importance that my new government shall attach to sports and its development, as well as the matter of young men in crisis. We are satisfied that we cannot just speak words to this demographic, but as a government, we have to get on the ground and connect with young men in particular so as to seek out and address issues in a reasoned manner and reasonable time frame. Agriculture, blue and green economy are again connected, and on this occasion, fisheries shall stand out as an upgraded department of this ministry. Indeed, we are fortunate to have Dominica's resident expert on the subject in our midst as a member of parliament, and his skills shall be utilized in furtherance of our goal to explore and maximize benefits to be derived for Dominica through the blue economy endeavors. The national reset that's unfolding will be forged with the building of confidence and trust among social partners. You will see that we have created a special ministry of labor, public service reform, and social partnership. To operationalize many of the concepts that we have spoken about over the years, including the need to review and revise the terms and conditions of public officers, as well as improve the efficiency of the service they provide to the public. 
or the innovations will become evident as the new cabinet portfolios are revealed. Accordingly, the new look cabinet of ministers of Dominica and associated parliamentary secretaries shall be as follows. Roosevelt Skerritt, Prime Minister and Minister for Investment and Governance. Honorable Dr. Irving McIntyre, Minister for Finance, Economic Development, Climate Resilience and Social Security. Honorable Dr. Vince Henderson, Minister for Foreign Affairs, International Business, Trade and Energy. Senator Ribbon Blackmore, Minister for National Security and Legal Affairs. Honorable Cassidy Laville, Minister for Health, Wellness and Social Services. Honorable Melissa Poppin Skerritt, Minister for Housing and Urban Development. Honorable Roland Roy, Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Blue and Green Economy. Honorable Dennis Charles, Minister for Tourism. Honorable Fidel Grant, Minister for Public Works, Public Utilities and Digital Economy. Honorable Miriam Blanchard, Minister for Labor, Public Service Reform, Social Partnership, Entrepreneurship and Small Business Development. Honorable Greta Roberts, Minister for Culture, Youth, Sports and Community Development. Honorable Kozia Frederick, Minister for the Environment, Rural Modernization, Kalanago Upliftment and Constituency Empowerment. Honorable Octavia Alfred, Minister for Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training and National Excellence. Honorable Darren Pinard, Minister of State in the Ministry of Labor, Public Service Reform, Social Partnership, Entrepreneurship and Small Business Development with specific responsibility for entrepreneurship and small business development. Honorable Julian Defoe, Minister of State in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Blue and Green Economy, with specific responsibility for fisheries and the blue economy. Senator Honorable Oscar George, Minister of State in the Ministry of Culture, Youth, Sports and Community Development, with specific responsibility for youth and sports. Honorable Shakira Lockhart Hippolyt, Minister of State in the Ministry of Public Works, Public Utilities, Digital Economy, with specific responsibility for public utilities, telecoms, and broadcasting. Honorable Dr. Cassandra Williams, Minister of State in the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Social Services, with special responsibility for seniors' security, children at risk, gender affairs, and differently abled. Honorable Fenella Wenham, Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training, and National Excellence, with specific responsibility for education reform and human resource development. Honorable Darren Lloyd, Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of the Environment, Rural Modernization, Kalanago Upliftment, and Constituency Empowerment, with specific responsibility for constituency empowerment. Honorable Lakia Joseph, Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Blue and Green Economy, with specific responsibility for development of community agro enterprises. Senator Kent Edwards, Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Social Services, with particular responsibility for community and home care. It is my intention, ladies and gentlemen, at the first sitting of Parliament to nominate Mr. Joseph Isaac to serve for second term as the Honorable Speaker in the House of Assembly. Senator Philip Rowell will also be nominated as Deputy Speaker of the House of Assembly. The fifth government senator in the Parliament of Dominica shall be Mr. Ostel Lockhart. Additionally, I will, as Chairman of the Cabinet of Ministers, invite former Senior Minister Reginald Ostry to sit in on and serve as Special Advisor to the Cabinet of Ministers on Public Affairs and Community Relations. I believe with so many new faces in the government, we need someone who can keep members grounded in the wisdom of remaining fully com connected at the constituency and community levels, and also to provide us with wisdom and an interpretation of what the many persons that we serve are saying and how they are responding to the actions and pronouncements of the government. In the same regard, I shall invite former government minister, Dr. Kenneth Darrow, to serve as special envoy in the office of the prime minister. He will attend meetings of the cabinet on invitation. Among other responsibilities, 
He will have the specific responsibility for electoral modernization. Dr. Darrow will interact with the many sectoral interests that will be engaged and consulted on this very important issue as we ensure that Dominica has a modernized, efficient electoral system. Additionally, I've also invited for former Minister of Government, Ian Douglas, to serve as Dominica's ambassador to the Republic of Cuba. Cuba continues to be a very close and meaningful ally to Dominica along its path, pathway to development. In many respects, Cuba is our first country of reference in times of need. Mr. Douglas shall be entrusted and supported in strengthening relations with this cherished, friendly state and ally of the Commonwealth of Dominica. Former Minister of Government and Member of Parliament, Roslyn Paul, has been a cultural icon in her own right. I have asked Ms. Paul to serve as consultant to the Cabinet, and in particular to the new Minister in the Ministry of Culture, to advise on the creation of community-based, tourism-focused cultural enterprises. There is more to Dominica than just our natural rivers, waterfalls, and the like. We need to showcase our cultural and unique expressions, not only on selected calendar dates, but year-round in villages across the nation. Visitors to Dominica, and indeed residents and visitors of this country, should be able to go somewhere on island on a Friday or Saturday night and see a uniquely Dominica cultural exposition reflecting what and who we are. Communities of the North and Northeast and the Canelago districts will be specifically targeted for this program, and Ms. Paul shall be provided the necessary support to enable the execution of her assignment. On this occasion as well, I would like to announce the intended appointment of current Permanent Secretary in the Office of the Prime Minister, Mrs. Missy Henderson, to the long vacant position of High Commissioner to the United Kingdom with additional responsibility for diplomacy, trade, investment, and diaspora relations in several neighboring European countries. Former Secretary to the Cabinet, Steve Farrell, has, has, shall serve as Dominica's permanent representative to the Organization of American States and Ambassador to the United States of America. Dr. Philbert Aaron will be permanent representative to the United Nations, and Mr. Avondale Paul will replace Ambassador Hubert Charles at our, at, at our embassy in the United Arab Emirates. Fellow Dominicans, friends, residents, ladies and gentlemen, 2023 and beyond hold much promise for Dominica. We are focused on becoming the dy dynamic Dominica we know this country is capable of being. This new government will bring a fresh and purposeful approach to problem solving. We shall remain in touch with the people while maintaining healthy relations with nations far and near. Dominica will have a presence in major international capitals, and it shall have a voice and strong representation across the region. Moreover, we shall pursue, continue to pursue healthier relations with social partners in Dominica. A new ministry under Honorable Miriam Blanchard has been created for this. I have committed to more frequent engagement with trade unions, the private sector, opposition representatives, the church, and other arms of civil and social society. We shall be a government for all and of all. Fellow Dominicans, residents, and friends, a reset Dominica shall ride the tide. We shall navigate raging seas and return peace, progress, and prosperity to a nation that has had its own fair share of natural, global, and man-made disasters. I look forward to this new term with eager anticipation, and I invite each and every one of you to tune in to tomorrow, tune in tomorrow for the swearing in of your new cabinet of ministers. May God bless you all. May God continue to bless this beautiful, blessed island of Dominica. May God bless all of us. I thank you very much. I wish you a wonderful evening. Thank you.